Hello everyone, this is Outstar from World of Darkness team and welcome to this Vampire the Masquerade Blood Hunt related video. If you've already played Blood Hunt or maybe saw it on streams or videos, you probably know that in Blood Hunt Battle Royale game you can play as various character archetypes. And all of them are based on certain Vampire the Masquerade clans like Torator, Nosferatu and Bruja. These are of course all concepts coming from the role-playing setting and the game is filled with canon tabletop trivia that you can bring to your role-playing table. And if you already got connected to one of the characters that you played in the game, this series of videos is going to help you translate these archetypes into the role-playing setting. We're going to make character sheets based on every archetype that you can take and bring to Vampire the Masquerade 5th edition setting. You could of course edit them and add your own things, consult them with your storyteller and play with them if they allow. Most of the things that you can see on the screen, you can literally roleplay them at your table. Of course, there are some liberties taken in comparison to the book, and we are going to cover them when we are talking about particular abilities and how they work, because the abilities in the game are interpretations of the abilities in the book to make sure that they are better playable in the multiplayer fast-paced setting. One more difference that exists in between the roleplaying setting and the video game is that in the roleplaying setting itself, the abilities of your characters are less flashy. What your Bruja or your Torator can do in a tabletop setting is quite similar in the effect to what you can see in Blood Hunt, but all of these sparkles and particles and visual effects that happen in the game, they wouldn't normally happen in the role-playing setting. And that's because visual cues are very much needed in order to make the game competitive and make another player's actions more easy to read for you as a player of a video game. And it's not that much needed in the role-playing setting in which everything is a little bit more discreet. But apart from these little fireworks which surround your abilities, we can translate most of the other stuff into the role-playing setting and have these characters being playable at the table. So that's what we're going to do in this video series and we are going to start with Torator. In particular, we're going to start with Siren, which out of the two archetypes for Torator in Blood Hunt is more on the offense, more of an attacker. Siren is all about initiating fights, going in and destroying their enemy. They are a beautiful center of attention on the battlefield. They move very quickly among their enemies and they're blinding the enemies with their beauty, making them unable to act for a while as they are dealing their damage. So now let's translate it into the role playing setting and let's make a character sheet based on that. You don't have to have any pure experience with Vampire the Masquerade. I'm going to explain you everything from the get go. We're going to use the fun made fillable character sheet made by Talon. I'm going to link it down below. And we're to start a little bit the other way around than you would usually make your character. And it's a little bit of a tip if you're creating your v5 characters you do not have to do things by the order on the character sheet. Actually sometimes it's smarter or even easier to mix up the order a little bit and I'm going to show you how. The concept for our vampire is Blood Hunt's Siren. We're going to keep that as the main focus of what we try to do when we are writing this character sheet. The concept is something that is most useful to your storyteller to understand what kind of a character you want to play. We are going to pick Clan Torator. We're not going to pick the generation just yet. This is again something that you might discuss with your storyteller of what exactly they will allow you to do here. Because of course, the lower the generation, the more powerful you are, the more experience you have to spend but also the game gets a little bit more difficult in a roleplay if you play as an elder, mostly because you need more blood to sate your hunger. And of course, roleplaying a few hundred years old vampire is a much of a different deal than roleplaying someone who is a little bit more modern and similar to us. Hence, I would advise you to keep it high. Ancilla is the oldest types of character that I usually play, but neonates and fledglings are usually okay. I believe for this one, we are going to actually go for neonate or Ancilla just because of the experience experience expenditure, we might want to have a little bit more experience at first in order to facilitate for all of these abilities we would get from a Bloodhound character. But we're leaving this as for now, we're going to go back to it later on. We're also leaving attributes, skills and all of this stuff for a little bit later and we're going to start with disciplines. Why, you ask? Because we are trying to go by the concept of the Blood Hunt Siren, which is basically defined by the abilities, but what they can do. If you want to translate a character straight from this video game, you want to be able to do similar things that they do. And that's why we're going to start with the disciplines and see what we have to do above it later on in order to have these disciplines and make them work. So now let's check out the list of abilities of what Siren can do in Blood Hunt. 
and the first ability the one that annoys your enemies the most because it gives you a really big advantage for just a few seconds on the battlefield is the blinding beauty the siren radiates a light that blinds and slows enemies around them and if you remember it from the game it actually had this effect when you were afflicted by it you could see a blinding light and a little bit of a broken glass in front of your eyes but how it is interpreted by the name of this ability blinding beauty is that they are just so pretty and so wonderful that you can't take your eyes away from them. So this could be interpreted in two ways based on the Vampire the Masquerade setting. If you would like to mimic specifically this visual effect in front of someone's eyes, basically making them see something that doesn't exist, that would be chemistry. It comes from Vampire the Masquerade Companion and it's usually used by Clan Ravnas, but it is the ability for disciplined presence and it can be as well used by Torators. So if you want to interpret it more as a hallucination, chemistry would be your way. In this character sheet though, we actually will go with the other way, with more torator way of dealing with things. And that would be entrancement. Blinding beauty is an interpretation of entrancement. And let me read you the passage in the book that describes the ability. The vampire focuses their unnatural allure on a single person, instilling in them a rapt fascination or infatuation akin to falling head over heels in love or meeting one's lifelong idol. Now, in roleplay, this ability is used in the social settings. You cannot easily entrance someone in the middle of combat unless you're using a much more powerful presence ability, which is called Majesty. So as long as you use it in a social setting, in the non-violent setting, or as the very first action that you do after someone sees you, entrancement is going to work. Of course, if you get a good roll. Anyway, Entrancement is a level 3 ability of Presence, so we are going to enter it there. Because of this, we know that we need 3 dots in Presence, so I'm going to mark it there as well. Let's go to the second ability of Sirens. Kindred Charm. Civilians in the close vicinity of Siren become charmed, removing their ability to negatively react to the Siren's actions and making them faster to feed on. Charm subsides after a short duration when the Siren walks away. This is a very easy interpretation because that's basically all. First level, very basic ability of presence that is very much used by Torators. Most Torators I've ever seen known from any role-playing setting had all as their ability and they used it all the time. All is great because you don't have to spend blood to use it. You can just turn it on and off anytime. It makes you alluring. It makes you more interesting. It makes you this person that you want to hang out with. To give you the description from the book, anyone in the presence of the vampire finds their attention inexplicably drawn to them. Those listening to the vampire speak might suddenly agree on subjects where they once held different viewpoints. While this power doesn't cause rapt infatuation, it is still strong enough to sway the minds of most mortals. So again, Kindred Charm is pretty much all, that's the same thing. And we're going to enter this as the very first level ability for our vampire. Leaving us with the second level ability empty and this is where we're going to fill in. There's only one presence ability for the second level as for now in Vampire the Masquerade V5 and that is Lingering Kiss. That's a little bit of an extra over what we have in Blood Hunt. The Lingering Kiss is the ability to bite someone in a way that is so amazing and sensual that they will only want more. It's a very great tool for vampires to grow their hearts, to make sure that the humans are going to go back to them for more, because it kind of works like a drug. There's another option which would fit quite well here, and that is taking another first level ability called Don't. And Don't is like all, but instead of drawing people in, it pushes people away. So if you need the crowd to move, if you need to move through some very busy street without anyone bothering you, you can again just like all turn on and off Don't, which gives you this negative vibe, this very angry aura, and people will be scared of you and won't want to approach you. It's also pretty useful in-game, so uh, depending on what you want to do, you can pick Lingering Kiss or Don't in here for free. And now let's go to the third ability of Sirens in Blood Hunt, and that is Projection slash Dash. Throw out a projection that you can dash to with blinding speed. Placing the projection before engaging enemies will allow a fast escape route. 
It is a clan traversal ability that allows you to very quickly move through the battlefield. So again, reminder, the fireworks, so the visible projection of yourself, that doesn't exist in the role-playing setting because everything is a little bit more discreet, but the ability is pretty much a direct translation of blink from the celerity discipline. And this is also a native discipline for traders. So many traders do have celerity by default. This is uh, the inherent discipline for your clan. And by inherent discipline, it means that you spend less experience learning this discipline. So let me read you a description of blink. The vampire swiftly closes in on a foe, engaging or escaping in the blink of an eye. To an unprepared observer, the user almost appears to teleport, a rush of wind, the only sign of their passing. So this is ability of, again, a level 3 of celerity tree. So we need to have 3 dots in celerity in order to get it. We're going to put it on the third spot in our little table and make sure that we mark that we have 3 dots in it. So now we have 2 more abilities in the celerity tree to fill. But something that you might have noticed in Blood Hunt, a very visible, very wonderful part of Blood Hunt, is the traversal in general. And how all vampires can climb buildings and jump from one building to the other. And in general, the way they move is kinda inhuman. This is not natural to every single vampire in Vampire the Masquerade. It's not something that every vampire can do. Vampires, by default, their physicality, their athletic skill is similar to what humans can do or what they could do do when they were still humans. The plus side is they don't have to breathe, they can run without stopping, they don't really get tired, except for when the sun goes up, but that's a different deal, and they can swim without taking a breath, you know the deal. But in general there's no inherent super strength, super dexterity coming with the fact that you are a vampire in general. You need to get some dots in that in order to facilitate for the things that you could do in Blood Hunt. So, of course, for a level 1 ability for celerity, we're going to pick Cat's Grace. The vampire gains a balance and grace equal to and surpassing world-class trapeze artists. They can walk and even run across ledges and wires effortlessly and can keep their balance on the slimmest of supports. That's obviously going to make running through rooftops and various places up in Prague much easier. And for the level 2 ability, we're going to type in Fleetness. And that is the mastery of celerity, which allows Vampire to move and react with dizzying speed. A little bit of a top reward over what we can do with Blood Hunt. But that comes for free, it's discounts take it. And what we're going to do next is a core step in how to interpret disciplines into your dots. So what I always do when I write down my disciplines, I add the roles which they have mentioned. Some of these will have no roles mentioned at all and that's okay, but this is going to give us a pretty good overview of what we need to invest in in order to make the best bumper for ourselves. Celerity, as you can see, bases very much on dexterity and athletics. Dexterity is an attribute, athletics is a skill. And and for presence, we need manipulation and charisma, which are also our attributes. So let's roll back to the top and start the attributes. Everyone gets the same amount of dots in the beginning. You can later on expand this dot pool by spending experience. But you start with picking your strongest attribute at four. And for us, I believe it could be dexterity. The way we climb and jump and move through these buildings and rooftops, it's totally amazing. So four dots in dexterity. And now you usually pick the one attribute which is the worst for you. So only one dot. If you're going to go by Blood Hunt, I would say Composure should be the one. In general, you can say that Composure is something that's very much lacking for most of the vampires on the battlefield in Blood Hunt. Everyone is focused on destroying their enemy and not very much on trying to find different options. So yeah, let's give you one dot in composure. And we are of course going to give three dots to abilities which we need for presence abilities. So that would be charisma and manipulation. And we can pick one more. I would say strength or stamina would be the best choice depending on how you want to interpret blood hunt. But I'm going to give three dots to strength. Climbing things in general like requires a lot of strength. I know that because I have no strength at all and I cannot climb anything. And the rest of them get two. That's a middle of the road kind of a way of how you are intelligent, witty, what is your resolve and stamina, and that's okay. And as you can see here at our disciplines, we have pretty interesting amount of dots in here for the beginner character sheet. We have 
six dots, three in one, three in the other. But the book says that you can only take two in one and one in the other. So how do we get these extra dots? But And that's actually not that difficult. But to make sure that we are not spending too much experience at the very beginning, because we only get a very specified amount, depending on whether we are a neonate or an ancilla, we need to pick a predator type for our character, which corresponds with our ability. Predator type is the way you usually feed, the way you usually gain blood as a vampire. And surprise, surprise, for the Siren archetype, we're going to pick Siren Predator type. As a siren in Vampire the Masquerade setting, you take blood from others under the pretense of sexual encounters or by flirting with others, by trying to seduce them. Very much on brand for the beautiful siren that we have in Blood Hunt with awe, with entrancement, all of these abilities, the way you look, it just works very well with the siren predator type. After we pick a predator type, the next thing we do is we apply all the bonuses to our character sheets which this predator type gives us. And every predator type gives you a bonus to a certain discipline. And for Siren, it's either presence or fortitude. We're going to assume that the third dot in presence was bought with this particular archetype. So by default, you had two dots in presence, one dot in celerity, you bought the third one with Siren. We're going to write it down in our notes. And this gives us two dots in celerity, which we would need to buy with experience. And to buy a new clan discipline, that's new level multiplied by five. So level two would be 10 and level three would be 15. Taking a total of 25 experience points we need to spend in order to facilitate for these two dots. We're going to write it down in there and consult it with our storyteller in order to make sure they allow us to take this much experience. All right, so now we're going to scroll right Right back up and we're going to add more benefits we get from the siren predator type and one another benefit we get is the specialty that we get in one of our skills the choice that we have is in between persuasion and subterfuge and to one of these we can add seduction specialty i think we're going to pick subterfuge just because it's a little bit more flirty i guess so seduction in here uh, we're not adding the dots just yet this uh, kind of counts like one dot specialty means we're going to get one more dice in this roll if we're are going to use subterfuge specifically to seduce someone. We've already added the dots of the disciplines, so now we also gotta add the merits and flaws later on. We do get beautiful merit, which is very much on brand for the Siren from Blood Hunt. That means we get two dots in here, that's for free from this predator type, and we also get one flaw because nothing can be as perfect, and that flaw is for enemy. We need to pick in between a spurned lover or a jealous partner. I think spurned lover sounds pretty good. This means that we might meet someone on the battlefield that actually loved us in the past or maybe still loves us but just cannot agree with the fact that we are flying solo. That's all good and we are also going to fill in the hunting role for Siren which is charisma plus subterfuge. This is the role we are going to roll when we are hunting someone using our predator type. So when we are trying to seduce someone and get their blood in a sexual situation or in a flirtatious situation, this is what we do. And hence, we gotta remember that we also need some dots in subterfuge. We are going to do it right now. As you can see, I also filled in the blood potency tab, but we're going to focus on that later. Okay, so we are back on the skills tab. There are three ways in which you can fill in your skills. There's either jack of all trades type, a balance type, or a specialist type. I'm going to share a little tab on the screen so you know what I'm talking about. In general, this is very much of a specialized character sheet, so we are going to go with the specialized way of distributing our skill points. And because it really doesn't hurt for us to have a very high hunting role, as you do hunt a lot in the game, I would actually give us four points in subterfuge. And now we have to pick three skills at three. And let's pick things that somehow are taken from our concept, Blood Hunt Siren. So that will be, of course, athletics, firearms, and melee. Now we also have three skills at two, so now we can literally pick anything. I would say if we're going to go with Blood Hunt's example, awareness is going to be great. Intimidation is something that we also should think about. And streetwise, so we know more or less where we are when we jump around rooftops of Prague. 
And now three skills of one dot, I would say etiquette, because we do have that movement. There's, I think, somewhere in the main menu where a torator bows down wonderfully. Politics, that's useful. And persuasion, of course, because we are charismatic, we're beautiful. It's only logical for us to be persuasive as well. So now for these three, that's pretty easy. Health is going to be stamina plus three. So that means four. And willpower is our composure and resolve. So that means three. Humanity is going to be default, and that is seven. I recommend checking out the details about how to roleplay a certain humanity in the V5 core book. Different humanity numbers mean different things. And I guess as we are going one after the other, we're going to go back to the very top later on. Let's check out this step and what exactly this is. Critical tenets. You don't have to worry about it right now. This is something which you're going to fill in with your storyteller. That's something that you're going to have shared within the players in your chronicle. Now, touchstones and convictions. Touchstones are humans. They have to be specifically mortal. You have some kind of a contact with them. It doesn't have to be personal. It can be a person playing harmonica in a subway station that you always meet whenever you use it. These people remind you of your humanity and they need to exist in order for your humanity to exist in general. Because as a vampire, you are not human anymore and you need some kind of reminders of what exactly being a human meant. So this might be your distant relatives or your still living relatives. It might be your human friends, servants, chauffeurs, bartenders of the bars that you frequent, or again, people that you don't really have contact with. Maybe people you stalk, maybe actors or singers or YouTubers, influencers that you follow. You have to pick one to three of them. For each of them, you pick a conviction. And a conviction is kind of a, your personal creed, your personal moral rules that you abide to. If you break the convictions, you're going to gain stains, which may result in humanity loss, but you may also mitigate getting stains by performing some bad deeds, for example, hurting someone if what you did was done because of your conviction. So, for example, always protect the innocent. You are actually protecting an innocent and that's why you hurt that guy who was trying to attack him and hence you mitigated the stains from hurting that guy. So uh, that's a very basic explanation of that. We're going to go with something on brand. Again, this is Bloodhunt. Bloodhunt is set in Prague. So we're going to pick someone from Prague and hence I found a Czech name generator online. Yes, I know it's called fantasy name generators. No, Czechia is a real country. <laughs> it's not fantasy. <laughs> But uh, they also have Poland here and the Polish names were actually very accurate. So I was like, okay, check is going to work too. Hopefully. One of them is going to be male. Let's find a cool male name. Augustin Kraus. That's a pretty nice name. I'm going to copy that. So Augustin Kraus is going to be actually a director of the Museum of Senses in Prague. And this is a real location, you can check it out on TripAdvisor. Museum of Senses is an experience that tackles your senses, so you are inspired to discover more and therefore feel more. Live the unimaginable, experience a world of sensations, mind-blowing optical illusions and test your senses as an extraordinary museum. Obviously, as you're a siren, I think this fits you very, very well. And you are probably serving as an inspiration for the guy <laughs> that works in this museum. And the second touchstone is going to be female. So I'm going to pick a name in here. Janeta Brezinova. Okay, we're going to go with that. I really hope I'm not butchering these names. I'm reading them in the Polish way. Anyway, Janeta Brezinova is a gardener in Verba Garden. I hope I didn't butcher it too much, which again is a beautiful Baroque garden in Prague. Seems very much on point for a torator to just want to go around this garden sometimes and chill. And I assume our torator sees Janetta sometimes when he's there and he sees her hard work and therefore he has her as a touchstone. Maybe he doesn't even talk to her, maybe he doesn't have a contact with her, but he just sees her working and that inspires him. And now we have to pick two convictions because we have two touchstones. And I'm again going to try to pick something on brand for a blood hunt character. The first one would be always strive to be the center of attention. I mean, that's what Siren does, right? You are trying to be the center of attention in, on the battlefield. And the second would be punish those who disrespect you. You are definitely not going to let it slide if someone disrespects you on the battlefield, right? Clan Bane, you can just type Torator in here. Your Bane means that you are going to get dice penalties in ugly places. You are unfortunately very much affected by your surroundings being ugly. And you also have a compulsion, which sometimes triggers on uh, specifically unfortunate roles. And that 
compulsion makes you obsessed with something aesthetically. Obsessed to the point that you cannot really think about anything else. You can read more about them in the books, but this is something that is going to come into play and make your life more difficult, because every clan has their own bane. Now we're going to scroll down. Resonance and hunger. This is something that you feel in during your chronicle. You don't have to worry about it now. And we are also going to completely ignore biographical data because I assume everyone is going to feel it up to your own preferences. How you look like. This is how your Blood Hunt character would look like. Distinguishing features. You probably have an idea about that. History. That's all up to you. Naturally, of course, you can also change the other things here. But I'm just saying that this is a very specific personal stuff. So I don't want to give you a uh, one layout for this. But we need to pick some merits and backgrounds and flaws. Above these predator type bonuses which we got, we also need to pick seven points of advantages and two points of flaws. And these are everything from how much money you have, what kind of a haven you have, if you have some particular allies, friends, or maybe enemies. We're going to make it easy with the flaw, we're going to spend two dots on steak baits. Steak bait means that you are going to die if someone puts a stake to your heart. It's a very European thing. I mean, we do have people buried in Krakow, for example, and in other cities of Europe from medieval times where they had a stake in their heart. So I would assume this is something that does happen in Europe aplenty. Do protect your heart, little torator. And now for fun stuff, we can also pick some lore sheets. Lore sheets are in variety of V5 books and they give you some additional backgrounds and some additional cool stuff that your character might have because of what background you come from. And we are going to pick lore sheets Descendant of Helena. This is a trader specific lore sheet, you can only take it as a trader character. And we are going to actually take four dots in it. So this is the lore sheet, it's in the V5 core book. And level 4 means, unlike most within Helena's extended family, your perfection is more angelic than devilish. You can commit any sin, but you will always look innocent. Add two dice to your dice pools when making tests to avoid blame for your actions. I just thought it's going to be very useful for a character who participated in the whole blood hunt ordeal, so yeah, this one is for you. We can pick three points more, so we're going to go with Bloodhound. This allows us to feel the resonances around us. So again, this is very much of a Bloodhound ability. And because you have this Augustan guy as our touchstone, and I said that we actually know him, he's going to be our retainer. So retainer is a mortal which actually remains under our control in some way. So that means they are probably our ghoul, for example. So let's say that we did feed our friends some of our vitae and now they are just very eager to help us out and maybe even give us some money from the operation of the museum. Because as you can see, we haven't taken any dots in haven and resources. It doesn't mean we don't have a haven. We do have a very bad motel room or a super sleazy office and few bucks to our name, but in general we can't really afford much. And hence our retainer is going to be very helpful if we need a little loan. And as you can see, I picked Blood Potency 1. That's because I think our character is going to be a neonate. You can copy the rest. This is based on the table from the book. Actually, an updated table, which happened in Vampire the Masquerade Companion, and it adds one point to Blood Search and Bane Severity. We can go up to the very top. Name is our character's name. Player is who you are. And Chronicle is the name of the Chronicle you're going to participate in. Ambition. I'm also going to leave it up to you. This is what exactly your character is aiming for. Do you want to secure yourself a cozy Camarilla position in Prague? Maybe you want to become a sheriff? It has to be something that is uh, possible to do. Sire, this is the person that changed you into a vampire, embraced you. It can be unknown, but you can also pick someone there. And for generation, we're going to pick 12. Neonate types of characters give us 15 experience points at the character creation. And as you can see down below in here, we actually used 25. So that's way more. In order to do this, make sure you have an agreement from your storyteller or make an Ancilla character, which is going to have 35 experience by default. If you pick Ancilla, so that's an older character, you will have 10 more experience, one more blood potency, which is going to change this table a little bit. And also you will have to add more merits and more flaws. For beginning 
beginner players, I do recommend playing as younger and less powerful characters, just because playing as an Ancilla may give you some difficulties. Too much power is not that much of a bonus in Vampire the Masquerade. Sure, you can have more powerful abilities and more dice to roll, but your beast is also going to be more powerful and you will have to feed more, you will stand out from the crowd a bit more, and you're going to play a much older character, which is less easy in roleplay itself. Just for the sake of having fun, I'm going to pick a name from the Czech name generator. Vladislav Vitek. I like this one. So hey, that's our Vlad, Bloodhunt Siren. And of course, this sheet is going to be available down in the description if you want to download it. And voila, with that we have a character sheet for the Siren archetype in Vampire the Masquerade V5. You can take this sheet, discuss it with a storyteller and see if you can play as one. Or of course, you can interpret it in any way possible in order to make your personalized character for v5. Let me know what you come up with, what kind of character you want to play, have you ever played v5 before? And if you have any questions, I would love to answer them down below in the comments. Can't wait to meet you in Blood Hunt. If you happen to diablerize me, well, that's okay. And tune in to the next video in which we're going to cover Muse Archetype, in which we're going to do a little bit more magic with mixing disciplines in order to make the best support type of a character for your role-playing campaign. Anyway, that's it for today. Check out all the links below and remember to subscribe to World of Darkness channel. Don't get lost in the night and goodbye.